today, here May 27, collaborative distributed version control. Oops. And I will do approximately one and a half hours. We will take breaks and then Beyond will do part two. So I will go in here. I will go in here and I really like these four bullet points, which give a really nice summary. So if we look back at Monday and Tuesday, uh, everything that we have been doing, almost everything has been happening only on our laptops, only on the computers, everything was locally. All the commits that we created, we created branches, we merged them, everything was local. Um, but now if I lose my computer, if I delete this .git folder, the history is gone. So how can we get, how can we back up our work? How can we share it with others? Sharing by email or manually, maybe not the most efficient way. It doesn't scale. So we will show you better ways. And we will focus on three use cases. One use case is it's just me and my repository and I want to put it out on the web. Maybe not even for the collaboration yet, but to have a backup, to show to others what I've, what I've done, to collect feedback, get some visibility, recognition, make it citable. We will, we will come back to that next week. How to get a digital object identifier for our code. Use case two is uh, we are a small group and we work all together within the same repository, but we will use branches. But everybody can directly update the same repository. And I will discuss these two and beyond will discuss the, the distributed version where we will do some forking. And there, any, anybody can suggest changes to a public repository, even without advanced permission. And then we will uh, discuss how that looks from the contributor's point of view and from the maintainer's point of view. We will exercise this using GitHub, but everything that we show really translates the same things you can do on GitHub, the same things you can do on Bitbucket. We, we choose to present this on GitHub because, because it, it is the most popular platform and we believe it's good if we, you, it's very likely that you will be exposed to it, even if you choose the other services, which are equally fine. And my plan now is approximately like 15, 20 minutes. I will give, a, I will explain what is really going on when we, when we clone and when we fork. So here, this will be just listening and, and asking questions. Then we will do uh, some hands-on work over here where I will, uh, but I will then also explain what, what we will do and we will then spend 20, 25 minutes uh, working together on a project within one repository, but I will explain. So let me first go into episode one. How can we back up repositories? How can we share repositories with others? We have seen it a bit yesterday, but it, but it was very brief. We didn't really explain what is happening when we, when we clone and when we, how can we synchronize repositories? And I will make that a bit larger here. And I want to clarify a few concepts. And I will also show them with this hand-drawn uh, image here. And I apologize for the low quality. I did that yesterday and I scanned it with my phone and it can be improved and it will be improved, but I will walk us through it and hopefully it will be helpful. So first some term terminology, what is a repository? A repository is, is the project, it's everything. It contains all the commits and all the branches and tags. Um, a commit is a snapshot and we've been creating commits the last two days and these, these commits have a unique identifier and they look like this. We have yesterday 
learned how to create branches. Branches are independent development lines. And often, often we call the main development line master. But apart from that, there is really nothing special about master. It's a, it's a convention and a name, but technically these branches are equivalent. And we, I'm unsure whether we mentioned tags, but a tag is like a branch, but it doesn't move. It's a sticky note. We can let it point to one commit and we can refer to it later. And we can give it a, a human readable name. So it can be nicer to give it a tag like this, PhD printed or paper submitted or version 1.0 instead of referring to this long hash, but this is also unique. And down here in this um, in this drawing, so the box the box here, that's a repository. These these little little boxes, these little rectangles, they represent commits. Um, there is a there are branches. Branches are these labels. So the, there is a master branch, and it refers to this commit and this history. And there is an idea branch and there is an experimental branch. And here is a tag. So somebody tagged this commit as version 1.0. And this repository lives on GitHub. And th this represents a cloud because, because the repository is now sitting in a cloud on somebody else's computer. And now there are several things I can do with this. Uh, the first thing I can do with it is to clone clone and by cloning it I make a full copy uh, onto my laptop. I copy all the commits, I copy all the branches, but now we can notice that the branches that were called idea, master, experimental, they got renamed. Now they are, they are called origin idea, origin master, origin experimental. And, the, and there is also a local master branch. So note that this branch is different from this branch, although both point at the same commit. So this, this happens when I clone. And let me really clone one, let me clone a repository on our in real life. And I will again take the, the one that we practiced yesterday. And to clone, I can now decide, do I want to use the SSH protocol or the HTTPS? I personally will go for SSH, but if you are unsure, I'll go for the HTTPS. I will copy this address. I will go to my terminal. And I see I didn't adjust the, I need to show you also the history. I will adjust that in the, in the next opportunity, in the next break. Here I already have a directory called Arvest. I will, I will move it so that I don't use the same name. And now I can do git clone and this address and it will create a new folder called Arvest. I can also give it a different name, different name if I want it. And now I will do what is on that picture. I'm copying everything, all the commits. I step in. Let's try git branch. And I only see master. And that is maybe a bit of a surprise because I would expect to see two branches. Here on the, on the project there are two branches. One is called master, another one is called GH pages. So where is the other one? The other one is here, git branch all. Uh -huh. So now I have a master branch. I have an origin master branch. I have an origin GH pages branch. Back to the script. So this is what I got. I cloned, I copied everything to my computer. That's one way of making a copy. And now I can make some changes, but the changes will be only on my laptop. The other possibility to make a copy is to make a fork. And a fork will also copy everything, 
all the commits, all the branches. But the fork will live, it will stay in the cloud. So it's still in this GitHub cloud here. But it, I will copy it to my user space. And then I can make changes to it as well. So let me make, let me make a fork. And that is up here to the right. There is a little fork button. Fork. I fork it to my user space. And now the photocopier is running. It takes like a second or two. And now I have my copy. It's in the cloud, it's on GitHub, but something changed. I will try to zoom in. It's now under my user space. And it remembers where it was forked from. What, yeah, I wanted to show you also on the terminal. What if I forgot where I cloned from? Oh. I can also find out where I cloned from git remote minus v. Yep. So, what is really important here, both in cloning and in fork, is that after I made the copy, the fork can evolve and the clone can evolve and they are related but they do not automatically synchronize so if i make changes over here on my laptop they do not aut automatically appear also in in this repository and if i make changes on my fork they are not automatically synchronized with this repository if somebody else make a new change and i'm not sure this is visible but i try to I try to show here that there might be a new commit incoming. They will not automatically show up in the fork or on my clone. So we need to synchronize. And the way we will synchronize will be by pushing and pulling. So I can pull changes from, from here to my clone. And I can push changes between repositories. And this is how we will synchronize changes. Notice that I could have also cloned, I could have forked first and then cloned. And maybe that would have been better because I can then push changes to my fork, but I may not have write permissions to push changes to, the, to this original repository. Okay, this is what we will do. Um, I wanted to show you that there are two more ways of creating a copy of a repository into your user space. And one possibility is importing a repository. So your, the repository can be in, in the cloud on some other place and you can import the repository into GitHub. And, then, and sometimes the other place can be GitHub and maybe you like GitLab better and that's fine. And then you can import it into GitLab. So this is, importing it will not it will not relate to two together it will copy everything and there is yet another way and this is important for the helpers because this is how we generate exercises if you realize that when you create new repositories you want to start out not with an empty thing but you want to start with a specific structure maybe you're working on a python project and you already want to have few files already inside the project every time you start a new project what you can then do is you can create a template so i can i can decide that this repository is a template repository and it's a bit like a cookie cutter you know when you create cookies when you bake cookies for christmas you have a cookie cutter and then you can create lots of similar cookies from the from the same shape and I can use this as a cookie cutter for my project. And from this template, I can generate new repositories and they stay on GitHub. What is What I didn't know at the beginning when I started using it is that when you generate, it will flatten the, the history. So you, you don't preserve the history, but it will here flatten these four commits into one. So you start with an initial commit, but it is not empty. There is the same code, the same thing, but it is flattened to one commit. So that is generating from templates. And this is how we will generate the exercises. Anything I forgot. So what we could try, we could visit one of the repositories projects that we have used recently. 
and we could try to find out how many forks exist and where they are. And let me let me do that. The repository that I've visited recently is this one. How many forks are there? There are almost 300 forks. And where are they? Let me click on that number. And here they are. So these are all the people that have forked this repository. I have discussed this part. So again, once we create these copies, they do not, they do not automatically synchronize. We need to pull and push. There is also fetching and we, we will discuss what is the difference between pulling and fetching. When we, when we cloned and when we forked, we copied everything, all the commits and all the branches, and which means that we got kind of backup for free also. So these are full-fledged repositories. It's not, we really copy everything, all the history. Are we ready to go to this episode two? And also for, for my co-instructors and co-organizers, if I if there is an kind of understanding question that we should clarify here in the main room in the HackMD, please please point it out. And now I will go into episode two, centralized workflow. This will be um, just a very 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 tiny little bit of theory, but then exercise. But I will I will explain the exercise in detail before we work on it. Here we want to practice this situation. Uh, I told you now in the previous episode that when we make a copy of a repository, it's a full fetch. We just got a question the difference mm -hmm. between fetching, cloning, pooling, and forking. What is the difference between fetching and cloning? Fetching, cloning, and pooling, and forking. Yeah. Okay, so let's first discuss our cloning and Working. So a clone makes a full copy, but typically from from GitHub, from from uh, one Git repository to my computer. That's how it's typically used. A fork is also a copy, but typically stays on in the cloud, and it's from somebody else's user space into my user space. So that's the difference between clone and fork. Um, then there was a different, uh, what was pulling? Pulling is, um, if I go, do I have a good picture? Pulling, I would use a pull when there was this new commit appearing here on, on the repository which I have cloned, but I don't have it on my computer yet. If I want to have this change, I need to pull the change. So that was pulling. And what was the last thing? There was one more term. Fet what was it? Pulling? Fetching. Fetching, yes. Uh, fetching, I wonder whether we will discuss that. So what is uh, fetching is I fetch all the commits that I don't have. So if I do a fetch here, I will fetch the commit over here. It will be in my Git repository, but it will not update my local branch. My local branch will still point to my last commit. I can then, in a subsequent step, I can merge this change into my local branch. A, a, pull, a, a pull is a fetch and merge. When I pull changes, I always fetch and I always merge. So git pull equals git fetch plus git merge. Uh, Radovan, mm -hmm. so when you when you uh, clone your repository, you only show your master branch and some red branches that were in the remote. Yes. So at that point, you sort of uh, uh, had the fetch, but it uh, it didn't actually pull, is it, did it? The the branch that was you only saw the master branch. Yeah. I'm not sure I understood really the question. Uh, so the difference between fetch and pull. Mm -hmm. 
so what was it uh, was it was that the reason that you only saw the master branch not the other branch when you did the clone no no it was not it would <coughs> The reason why I only saw the master branch is that after a clone, uh, the convention is that it will, the Git will check out for me a local branch that points to the default branch, which happens to be master. All the other ones, it renamed, it renamed them to origin slash branch. So that was not about, I didn't, so far then I didn't any, I didn't do any pull or fetch. Uh, I would see the difference if I if I clone and then I leave my repository there for two months and I come back to it. I would notice that in the meantime, this one has evolved because here the the Arvest developers have done a lot of work. And in the meantime, there would be new commits that I don't have. And now I have two choices to get them. So there will be new commits over here that I don't have locally. And option one would be I fetch them. Then I have them in my repository, they are there, but my local branches, they don't get modified. Only origin, they get updated. If I also want them to these commits, if I want my local master branch to be updated as well, I would, I would have to pull. Hopefully that got a bit clearer. In practice, we, I think most of the time we only get pull. But it's good to know that if you, if you are unsure what you are pulling and you first want to have a look at the commits locally before it modifies your local branch. So if you are very careful, you can first fetch, you can have a look at these commits and then you can merge in a second step. But in practice, we will probably only pull and we will not fetch. All right. I will go to episode two. And we are here. And I told you that when we, uh, when we cloned, uh, we made a full copy. So these are full fledged uh, repositories. And that is nice because when you have here, so that is a repository with one, two, three, four, five, six collaborators. It means that you have six backups. So even if GitHub would disappear one day, still the code is somewhere. At least one person has the latest version. <laughs> um, and um, now I call, sorry, yeah, there is the cat is running around here. <laughs> um, okay. Um, Back to the script. Um, so I told you that these repositories are in principle all equivalent, full-fledged, but I call one of these the central repository and I, I give it the red color. So this one is sitting on GitHub and this one will be on our computers. And this is only an agreement. So we agree, this is a convention. We agree that one of these places is the place where we keep our main development line, but there is really nothing special about the repository that sits on GitHub. But here, this is what we will practice. We will assume that we all have permissions to write to this repository so we can all push to it and we can pull from it. Uh, what is nice about this, that it's relatively simple uh, and it's good for small teams. Maybe the small disadvantage is that everybody who wants to make changes to this repository will have to have write permissions. But in the, in the second part of today's lesson, we will, uh, we will learn how can, we can suggest changes to a repository where we do not have write permissions. This is also, this, this is what we use for lesson development mostly. And we will practice this. I will now walk you through through this exercise so that you know what to expect. And in this exercise, we will um, we will use an exercise repository. And what the so every group 
in your breakout room will have one administrator. It, it will probably be the helper. It doesn't have to be the helper, but one person who is more comfortable with GitHub will be the administrator. And you will create an exercise repository from this template. And if you go to this template, you will see that there is a green button, use this template. And then you can generate an exercise from it. And this is this cookie, cookie cutter. And then in the HackMD, you can then create a section like this. You can say that we are group 13. And the administrator, it's, you will need to exchange GitHub usernames. So the administrator can put in the URL of the, of the exercise. So it will, it will be done in your user space so that everybody in the group knows where is this repository. And the, so everybody in the group also needs to communicate their GitHub usernames to the administrator because the administrator needs to add you as collaborator so that you have, so that you can push to this, push to this repository. So this will be a preparation. And we can communicate through, uh, through the HackMD. And don't worry, after the exercise, we will again, we will not publish these, we will remove these usernames. Then after, after you, you have exchanged this information and after the administrator has created this repository, you can, you can decide to, to watch it or unwatch the repository. So by default, you will watch it, which means that now you are a collaborator. Every time there is a new issue and a new pull request, and I will show what it is, you will get notified by email. And you can choose to, you can choose to unwatch, and you can do that over here. So up here, in, I can choose, do I want to watch, watch this repository or unwatch? So if you don't want to get these emails, you can click to unwatch, but we recommend, it can be fun to watch some of the repositories that some of the projects that you are maybe using because we, you can, it's fun to watch the developers, how, how do they communicate, how do they contribute, we can learn a lot from it. So it can be, can be useful. Then each of you in the group, within the group, you will clone the repository, git clone, the address. This part will be different because this part will be, it will be this place here. And you will clone it to your computer. And then you will see that suddenly there is, you will see there is only one commit and there is only a master branch. And you will see that on your local computer, you, there will be origin master and there will be master. <clears throat> you will step in and now we will try to do really a good practice right from the start. And that is before we do any changes, we will consider the master branch as our, our production code. It's our published uh, project. It's the, the tested code. This is the place that we don't modify directly, but we, for any modification, we recommend to create a branch. So every one of us will create a branch. And it will be good to, it's useful to give the branch a nice name, which is descriptive what is happening in the branch. I also find it useful to give my name. So git, I like to call my branches Radovan slash something I'm working on because then everybody knows who is, who is behind that work. If I want to find my branches, I can find them by the name. And so everybody knows what is happening inside. Uh, the goal of this exercise will be you will create a file and we want the file name to be unique because we want to avoid conflicts now, not to make it too complicated. Because if we take the same file name later on, we will probably experience a conflict, which is not a problem, but we don't want to have too many things now at the same time. So I recommend to have a unique file name. One way to have a unique file name is to take your username .txt, and inside you can share um, you know, your favorite cooking recipe or a haiku or a git trick. 
or something. Note that what we will do here will temporarily appear on the public web because we will contribute to a repository that is public. Later we can delete it again, but so we should not share something really weird, but um, I would say some cooking recipe or a Git trick, something short. Then you will commit the change. And notice that the commit only will only be on your computer so far. So there is a new commit here and your branch has to move forward. Nothing happened with origin master. Nothing, you will see that nothing happened yet on GitHub. So GitHub doesn't know about your change. Then you will push your branch to the, to the repository. And the command is git push, where do I want to push to? I want to push to origin. What was origin again? Uh, that is the place where we cloned from. And if I don't remember anymore, where did I clone from? It was git remote minus V. And we can later discuss what this minus U means. You can also leave it out, it will still work. Then after you have pushed, browsed the network of branches and commits, what was that again? That was on insights, insights network. So have a look at, have a look at this it's loading. Verify whether your branch shows up here in the network. Then submit a pull request. A pull request is like a change proposal. And in there, um, in the group discuss what are the things that you look at when you create a pull request. And after you create the pull request, maybe you can switch the screen share and you can then review the pull request. So a pull request is a change proposal towards the master branch. We will send it towards the master branch. And then you can have a discussion. What are the things that we look at when we review? And later when we come back from the exercise, I will also discuss these things. So even if not everything is clear and discussed in the in the group, we will I will show some of the things that I look at when I submit a pull request and when I review a pull request. And this is really code review. And later we will come back to this and discuss also protected branches. And after after your change shows up, uh, so after you push, it's on GitHub. After your pull request is merged, there will be a new merge commit on master. And then there will be changes of all the other people in the same group. So in the last step, you will update your local copy. You want to make sure that all the changes from all your group members are also on your local, on your local repository. And then we will come back. We will discuss a bit more. There are some uh, optional steps that you, if you have time, you can discuss them. You can then later try what happens if we are all working on the same branch. And you will experience these kind of messages and you can discuss what they mean. And I'm sure some of you have seen them already. You can also, what you can try is how do I make a change to a remote branch, which is not master, but some other branch. And how, how can I create a, a, a new branch on GitHub? And there are some more resources that we can later discuss. First, I would like to ask, because I have here instructor bias, um, what did I miss on the practical side for the exercises? So my goal is that you will have 20 minutes to work. We will come back and then we will take a break. So we will not mix the, the the group work with the break. And then we will, I will also show this here in the main room and I will then discuss some of the, some of the features. Any burning question I will hack at me or anything practical I missed? So Radwan, did we, uh, did we mention that um, when you're cloning, we, we, we don't clone the template. The, so we have links to our template uh, repository and we have a repository that we should be cloning. Yeah, that is a very good point. So the administrators, 
So only one person per group will deal with the template. And if don't hesitate to ask questions if this, this is the first time that you see this. Everybody else, so once the exercise is created, it will have an address here, administrator's username. And then please, for the group, put this address over here. And everybody else in the group, they will clone this repository. And everybody will be able to clone it, but before you can push to it, the administrator needs to make you collaborator. And for the collaborator, once you get edit as a collaborator, I think we write it somewhere here. So, to two, yeah, the, once you get edit as a collaborator, a GitHub sends you an invitation email that you need to accept. So only after you accept the invitation, you are really a collaborator. Okay, hopefully it's, we know what to do. We would, uh, we would be back. I will check how it's going, but either 10 past the hour or 15 past the hour. Uh, and we will then take a break and summarize. And I will now, I will now uh, generate this exercise from the template in my space. Use this template. And I'll keep, I'll give it the same name. Ah, I already have one. Okay, I just generated this exercise. And I will arrange my windows so that it doesn't interfere too much. Okay, now let's clone. Where did I clone from? This is where origin refers to. And I can I can use both interchangeably. So whenever I will later write origin, I can also use this address instead. And now the next step was to create a new branch before doing anything. And I can even do that in one step. Get checkout minus B. And I recommend to use my own name and now I will get Trick. If you have your git, you can also do this switch minus create. Check out minus B. And now I will create a new file called unique name.
here. So I'm sharing here a trick. Okay, I did that branch. I will create another branch also. Change the branch name. So for those watching this stream here, or when I'm about to send a pull request, I always verify from where to where. It's going from this branch to master. This is what I wanted. Title, more description in here. Here I can refer to maybe a discussion we had on an issue. I can refer to that issue. I also always browse what commits I'm about to send and what is the change. for the best. And I will review it then when we come back from the group work.
Welcome back. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to show you some of these steps on, on this exercise repository myself, but I also heard that there were questions. Maybe Sabri, you wanted to, should we uh, take them now uh, or later? Uh, yes, Radhan. So I, I want to push to the master branch when you are showing or are you going to create a branch? I wanted to uh, create a branch and follow the example, but I can also show what happens if several people push on a master. Okay, so the so the exact question is like different people create uh, different files with different names. Yep. So why why can't Git figure out how to join them? Like you know, the, of course the hash is different, but can't Git know that because the file name is different? If you combine those automatically, uh, there won't be a conflict, right? Do you understand my question? Mm -hmm. yeah. So why why is the push rejected? Rejected although although they use different names. Like the file names are different, so it was not one file people changing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I can answer that now. So that when we do a git push, uh, git will compare the the hash on the remote repository and the hash on the my local repository. It will not really look at files. It will look at these hashes, at the checksums. And it will verify the hash that on that is on the remote repository. Do I have it locally? If yes, then I'm allowed to push. If not, I'm not allowed to push because there is there is something in the history of the remote repository that I don't have locally. And that's it. It doesn't really look at files. Which means that it, this doesn't mean that there, there is a conflict. Because that 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 is a second step to check but the first step is to check are our histories relate i mean do i does my local repository contain all the history and if not it aborts it could be a bit less conservative hopefully that was answered so this, this uh, some of you who tried to do that, to push to the same branch, got this warning. It's a good thing. It's really a good warning because it, uh, this warning over here, because it doesn't, it makes sure that I'm not overwriting other people's work. Uh, but it, it could be that the, it's on a different file, uh, but Git doesn't check that. And then uh, the the way to re recover from this would be to first update my local changes with a git pull or fetch before pushing again. So I would like to now summarize a bit and I will go through these steps and show you some of the things that I look at. And I think as a bonus, what we can also try is that we together fix this problem that uh, this text here was outdated. So we could we could discuss how we how would we fix this, and we can try to fix it together. So this will be something I think really useful. But first, I created myself this exercise repository, and I generated it from from this template. And Locally, I created a branch with a git trick and I created a branch with some recipe. And one of the two I have already pushed. Uh, let's go to the insights and network. So I have already pushed this git trick. I have not created yet a, a pull request. No, I did. I have created a pull request. I have created a pull request. We will review it in a moment, but I wanted to show you, I will create another one just for those of you who missed it so that we can go, we can see how that works together. And I will do that from this, this recipe. So I have another branch. This branch only exists on my computer. I haven't pushed it yet. Git status, git log. This is an Apple Strudel recipe. I would like to share it with others. Uh, okay, maybe difficult to read. 
the plug. What I can see from this git log, or maybe let's use git graph. Clear git graph. What I can maybe see here is that this branch is not on the remote repository. On the remote repository, there is there are these two branches. And this one. How do I push it? I need to first of all, if I don't remember anymore, where do I where did I clone from? Git remote minus v. Origin is a placeholder for this address, and I can use them interchangeably. So to publish this branch, I can use git push origin and this branch name. Equally fine would be, instead of origin, I can also use this address directly. It's the same effect. So they are interchangeable. Where do I want to push to, to origin? What do I want to push to branch name? Now my branch will appear here. I will reload the browser. There is my new branch. I didn't create the pull request yet, the change proposal. There are several ways to do that. One way is I can be, I can visit this link here. That's one way. But what if I already lost that? I already my terminal is cleared. I don't see that anymore. The other way is to go to the project. And now Git realized, GitHub realized that I have pushed recently a branch. So maybe I want to create a pull request from it. And even if I miss this part, there is yet another way to do that. And that is, I can go on the branches. There is my new branch and I can create it from here also. So many ways to create a pull request. All of these bring me to this form. So this is a change proposal. The first thing that I look at, I normally verify from which branch to which branch. Is this what I wanted? It also verifies that it can merge. There are no conflicts. I can give it a title and here I can give more context. I can refer to a discussion that we had, to some issue. Before I click on the button, the other things that I normally verify is I verify the commits. Here I'm sending one commit, could be many. If I see commits here that I didn't intend to send, then I abort, maybe I made a mistake. I also normally scroll down and I verify the, the diff. Is this really what I wanted to send? Yes. Here I have several options. I can create a draft pull request. This can be really interesting to or share something that is half finished. Then others can look at it and I can collect feedback. This can be very useful. In this case, I think this is a finished product. I create a pull request. And now I have two pull requests. And now I can imagine that I'm a different person because what we want is that we don't want the person who submits to be also the person who to reviews. So this should be some other person in the group reviewing the changes. And I can tell you what I'm looking at when I'm reviewing a change. And notice that these changes are not on the master branch yet. They are still, they are still, uh, nothing has been merged to master. This will only happen after I accept these pull requests. So now I'm a different person. I look at the title. Here, maybe some more description. I often look at the first thing I look at what has changed. And I can comment here. So if I have suggestions or questions, I can comment directly here. We can also have a conversation over here. So I can ask questions. Suggestion. And we can have a conversation. And then I can ask for improvements. And a one way to Apply improvements is if you push changes to the same branch, then they um, then they get appended to the to the pull request. And once I'm happy, once we are all, ha all happy, we can merge it. And only now it will be part of the master branch. The change is merged. 
let's see the network or insights. One of the two is already merged. And now I have the option to delete the branch. And the only thing I will delete is this label. It will not remove the commit. So let's delete the branch. Now I muted myself accidentally. Oh, and now reload again. The commit is still there, the branch is gone. And now I could re review also the recipe. Code review is not only about quality. So what are the things that one could look at so as well? We could set up automated testing. We will do that later. I could look at the code that is now going in. Is it also documented? But it's also about learning. So now when another person reviews my change, at least two people know about this change. So it's a, it's a nice way of learning from each other. The reviewer can learn from the submitter. The submitter can learn from the reviewer. And also in this case, I will merge the change. And now both of these, both of these are now on the master branch. So here was the trick, and here is this recipe. But although this got merged on uh, on GitHub locally, so locally I don't. If I git check out master, if I have a look at my master branch locally, these changes are not there. So just because something changed on GitHub, it did not automatically synchronize. And now to update my local master branch, I need to do the opposite of pull, of push. I do git pull where from, from origin, which branch, the master branch. And the git pull command will modify my current branch, which happens to be master. So here I'm merging changes from the remote master to my local master. And if I now do git lock one line, I see these changes. Uh, okay, I would like to, we could do one more thing which would be really, really useful. And this was, we realized that the description here was unfortunately outdated and this confused a few groups and I'm really sorry for that. And and this is what happens when you track change track a text in two places because we had the description in two places and what happened is what always happens it it diverges you change it in one place and you forget that there is a second place but we can now how about we fix it together and i can show you and we will apply really the techniques that we have now learned and i want to fix it in the template directly so I will, I will go to the template. This is the template repository. It's the only thing that makes it a template is because on settings, I check this check mark. This makes it a template. You cannot see the settings here because you are not, in this case, you are not a collaborator. You are not an admin, you are not an owner, but I'm an administrator of this repository. But now I know about this problem. The first thing I will do, which is a really good thing to do, is I will open an issue so that I can inform the community that I know about the problem. Later I will also fix it, but maybe I have no time to fix it. Or maybe I don't know how to fix it, but maybe somebody else does. So I will inform the community, I will open an issue and describe the problem. And for this I will make that, I will minify this, make it a bit larger. So an issue has also a title, the description here in the readme is outdated. Uh, is outdated. I can give more description in here. I submit the issue. At least now others have the chance to know that I know about the problem. Notice that the issue has a number. It has the number four and I will take a note of that because I will refer to that number. And now let's fix it together. And how will I fix that? I will clone this repository. Clone it. And this is what we did with the exercise. Just rearrange Windows. Back to the terminal. 
I clone that address. Anybody can clone it because it's public, but not everybody can push to it, but I can because I'm a collaborator. And I'm not a master, but I will not modify master. I will create a new branch. Git checkout minus B. And I will call it my name and fix readme. I created the branch, I switched to it, and now I want to fix the problem. And I think what will be a good thing to do instead of all the text here, which can be outdated, let's refer to, let's avoid this problem in future and we will refer to exercise description and let's refer to the one that we have over here which was the plan. Of course, later I can beautify it, but already this is better than wrong information. Git status, git diff, what did I change? I removed a lot and I added something. Git add the readme, git status. Git status, and now let me commit that. And in the commit message, I will say that uh, refer to exercise description. But what I will also do, I will say that this problem closes the issue number four. And that will be interesting. So in my commit message, I refer to the issue number four. Git log one line. Oh, let's do git graph. So I have this new branch with this new commit. I will push it. How was that again? Git push origin branch name. Here we go. And now for a change, I can visit that link. And it will already look familiar. So I am about to create a pull request. Again, I verify from where to where, title. Let's scroll down and see what we did. Yep, that makes sense. And notice something will interesting will happen. I will open the pull request. And now GitHub understood this message because now it can cross-reference the commit message with the issue. And if you go to the issue, you will also see that the issue gets cross-referenced. This was the problem, but and the problem is not solved yet. Uh, but at least in the issue, see that somebody did something and references this issue. Radovan? Yes. There's a request to go slower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I realized that this is really fast. Um, if this cross referencing, we will do in the follow up exercise. So, Beyond will, we will do that again and a bit more slower. So this was very fast here with cross-referencing issues, but we will come back to that today and we will come back to that next week when we talk about testing also. I think the take home here is not how I did it. It's more that yes, you can cross-reference commits and pull requests and issues and it can be useful. And now when I accept it, I can now again imagine that I'm somebody else who reviews it and agrees with these changes, I will merge it. And now that the changes got merged, the issue will get automatically closed. And the good thing about that is that we have a well-defined lifetime for the problem. If later I want to know from when till when did the problem exist, it existed from six minutes ago 
up to this commit. And now we also did something useful, so at least for the next workshops, they will not run into the same problem. This was very fast. Before I hand over, any questions that we should discuss in together, anything that stood out in the hack and D. So where do you find the standard trilogy so that GitHub recognizes it, like closes and stuff? Yeah, uh, I, I normally search for GitHub auto close issues. GitHub can do it too. And you can close issues using keywords and GitHub understands these ones. Close, closes, fix, fixes, fix, resolves. And then you can refer to the number and it will, if you forget to put that into the comment message, it's not a problem. You can put that into the pull request description or title and it will also be understood. Okay, some of the things went too fast, but they will come again because now we will go one step further. We will do forking, but it will look very similar. And then we have a chance to see these things a bit slower and again, and we enforce them. Sorry for the troubles. Hopefully there was something useful and I will give the microphone to, to Bjorn. So we, uh, we... You find this in this, the lesson in the schedule, distributed version control forking workflow here. Um, so we just worked with a central repository <clears throat> and, and where you all had uh, access to, to the central repository. But now we will work with a, uh, central repository where you don't have write permissions. So um, in the, the group, you will create um, several uh, cloned uh, or forks from, the uh, from, from one central repository. So uh, the helper or one <coughs> maintainer will create a central repository from a template um, paste that uh, address to the uh, into the HackMD, and you fork this uh, this repository to your user space, and then from that fork you will clone it to your local computer, where you do, will do some uh, modification, and in this time you will push the um, the um, the changes to your fork on, on GitHub, and then make a pull request uh, to the central repository. The, so this is called the forking layout, <coughs> uh, and it's quite uh, usual um, and uh, normal way of working at uh, on GitHub. So <coughs> here you only have uh, read access to a, let's say a public project and very few, and uh, there are maintainers that kind of guards the central repository and, and then do uh, <coughs> code review of, of the pull requests that they get. Um, so uh, this is a natural uh, step further from working uh, in from the pre previous model because here you really can scale out and, and everybody that thinks they have an ID uh, or find an error that they want to uh, mod uh, correct can, can then just make a copy by forking and, and do the modification. Uh, so, <clears throat> and, and uh, as you also saw in the previous lessons, the, there is integrated code review, um, but the maintainer then can view all type types of changed uh, requests. There is a certain uh, learning curve to this kind of model um, because it doesn't come automatically from the GitHub uh, commands that we will normally use. So we have to take some necessary steps. Uh, we will then have uh, several remotes um, 
in our repository, uh, in, uh, in our local uh, repository, we will have our, um, uh, when we are cloned, we, we get the origin uh, remote, which is our fork. And at one point during the exercise, we'll, we'll, we'll create a remote that defines the central repository as well. So, so to list the, the remotes, we have already seen this command, but it's git remote minus minus repos or minus we. And uh, here is how you, the commands for modifying, adding or removing <coughs> remotes. Uh, one very natural uh, uh, way of naming uh, remotes when you work in the parking layout is to define the, the central repository as upstream and your forking, uh, forked repository as downstream. Because the, work <coughs> the workflow goes that you will pull, uh, sorry for this, you will pull uh, changes from uh, the central repository, you will do your modifications and then you will push your uh, your modifications and the new the the changes that you've gotten from the central repository to, to your fork. So imagine that you are kind of like fishing in a river and so you get all these modifications uh, from upstream and then you uh, send all the, the, your changes and the new the, uh, uh, changes downstream to your fork. Um, yes, so we will <coughs> we will practice this in um, in a, in a workflow in an exercise. So um, in the group one person uh, do um, the necessary preparatory step and, and create a um, forking, fork working uh, repository from a template um, and you write the uh, the address of this newly created repository in the shared document so the others in the group then fork the helpers or the uh, maintainers newly created repository uh, and you all and the group members <laughs> clone the fork and, and uh, the maintainer can also clone his or hers uh, repository and <clears throat> you start then to work locally on your computer. So what, what you will have then uh, is first you will in, in the cloud or at the GitHub service you have a copy uh, on the uh, central uh, repository in your fork. So, and when you clone, you will, we will then at least have three uh, instances of this repository. You will also open, open an uh, issue uh, in the central repository. <coughs> And uh, as Ravlon did uh, when updating the README, uh, you know the, uh, the issue number uh, and you can then use uh, the closes or fixes or resolve uh, in your commit message and, or in the um, code request later on. Uh, you then create a new branch. Here was, you see the local uh, repository starts to deviate from, from the fork and the central. To create a branch, uh, you add a recipe for taco or something else, and you push them the changes to the fork, and now the, uh, the um, fork will um, be uh, a copy of your local and you also get use git graph uh, frequently so you see the updated tags in your in your local repository as well so then you file a pull request uh, and uh, and uh, the next step, uh, the maintainer can share uh, their screen uh, 
during the F pair to, to accept the different uh, pull requests and, and you then update your uh, after your pull requests are accepted uh, and you can then and you do this together and uh, in the share screen so you can see the pull requests uh, and after this is done you update your local remote you you add the the upstream uh, as a remote and and you fetch the, the changes and you will then be as in a situation where you have all the changes from the central uh, repository locally, but your pork is out of date. So you will need to push those uh, changes to uh, your fork. So you, your all repositories are in sync again. So I'll give you 30 minutes. 30 minutes for this, or 25 minutes for this uh, this exercise. So we reconvene at 11.30 in Central European time. That's 12.30 Finnish time. And for those of you who are watching this on Twitch, they can go uh, uh, to the repository mentioned on the part A here. A here um, for the ones of you who follow the main run, you first fork the repository. Um, if you click on this, you will come to the code refinery forking workflow exercise, and here you push fork and you oh. fork it to your uh, to your uh, namespace okay. like this. I'm also pasting this into the Twitch chat. Yeah, and then you clone. I'm using SSH, but you can select HTTPS. So I'm gonna clone. So now I have the forking workflow exercise, and this is my local copy. Um, so I'm gonna go into the directory and do a git graph. So there is only the master. <coughs> I'll create a branch. We need that checkout minus B. So I have a recipe that I want to share with you. So I call it Lan Taco. So no 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 came land talk and D Mm 
for that. Control X. Let's, I see to the mark and land tacos. Status at So now I have did my recipe locally. So I push. And I'm standing in lamb taco, so this branch will be pushed to read to origin. Okay. I'm missing my remote here is. My <coughs> local fork to in the on GitHub, and here it is. So here I can create a pull request. So but I forgot to create a issue. So I'll go to the forking exercise and make an issue. New issue. Um, Then go to issue number one. So now I go back to my to my forked repository. working exercise and now I'll compare and add uh, reference the issue number Here is a new 
simply close this number. Um, can you oh. see? I will show you um, go from uh, step B and onwards here at least. So um, I have made two recipes uh, and I made a pull request of the first one. And, um, and uh, the other one, I haven't done anything with yet. So this, this is so yeah, going back to my local, if I take a look at my local uh, repository, um, the graph shows, the graph. And now I'll show <coughs> that I have uh, made two branches, one called Lab Talk, Taco, also called Nordic Lamp. Uh, that's a spelling error. But uh, can you clarify what we're doing now? Yeah, uh, I'll I'll go through my uh, repositories. Uh, I have done the exercise uh, in parallel with you. Um, so I have forked um, the code refinery uh, workflow exercise which is the central repository. I fork this to my user space, the uh, Lindy J uh, forking workflow exercise is this repository. And I have here my local uh, the cloned repository on my computer. And um, my local uh, repository only knows of origin, which is my forked repository on GitHub. So, um, if we look, just to, to take a look at the um, at the uh, take a look at. Whoa. <coughs> Of, well, of what we have here is this, what I have a terminal is the local clone on a computer and the Lindy J is the fourth one. And, and we're gonna and now, uh, I have made a pull request for the first recipe. Uh, I haven't made the pull request for the other say, uh, second recipe, but I will uh, then accept the pull request in uh, this code refinery fourth repository 
and then add this as a, as a remote called upstream. And then as I accept the pull request here in the central, I will fetch these to my local and then will then push these to the fork. So I end up with uh, uh, three repositories that are fully in sync, that are, are complete copies uh, of each other. Um, yes, so going, going back then to my local, I see that in addition to the, uh, to the, uh, in addition to the uh, branches that I have made, which is the green ones, I have label for the branches on my forked repository on GitHub, which is marked with red. Um, and I already had done the push of these changes. So they now exist uh, one uh, as uh, a branch uh, well, one as a branch, uh, oh, one as a branch here in my uh, fourth repository, which is then with the misspelling. Uh, so I can do a compare and make a pull request. And the and the first one, I have made a pull request of already, yeah, and it's called add uh, Moroccan recipe. It has a green check mark, which shows that three of three checks are okay. So here I can then, um, let's see that as I wrote um, the pull request, I wrote closest number one. I had made a, a, a issue number, a, a, an issue and suggested to make a Moroccan lamb taco. That would be wonderful. So um, I also see that all checks have passed. So we'll do this next week where we will uh, create automated tests that, that can be a part of the, uh, the accepting the pull request. And uh, it's run on different systems. Um, yes, and I can view what I have suggested. So here's my recipe. So I'll merge this, confirm. So this, and then I can delete the branch as well. Um, so going back to my to my fork repository, I'll do the uh, compare, uh, do the creation of the pull request, just so we can see how the test, test is run. So I'll just keep the title, um, create a pull request. And we see, <coughs> see that there is um, no conflicts. And here you see the tests uh, are running. So this is yellow because they're pending, they're ongoing, and will be green once they're complete. Uh, if there was a failed check, uh, then it will would have been red. Uh, and yeah. So I'll merge this pull request as well. So if I now go to insights and network, and you should be able to do this in, uh, in the central repository for your group, uh, and you will see then uh, that there, uh, that the, um, the pull requests that have been accepted by the central repository are merged to the master. Uh, so here we see also uh, the user Trinity, which has forked um, 
uh, forked um, forked uh, the this repository as well, but I'm not sure. So she is or he is as what has going on here. Um, Because there are no, there's no pull requests from Team Team Lee. Um, okay, but but now uh, if I now go go back to, so now we're at um, the situation in F uh, where I need to update my fork. Um, so the the situation now is that that my changes from the local from the local uh, um, uh, my change uh, uh, my changes are being accepted so that I accepted so they are merged and both my local and fork uh, are now auto date because we don't have this merge uh, commit uh, which is in the central. So I then need to to define um, this uh, remote as an upstream and fetch from the upstream. In in uh, your case, in in the groups, you need to change this to the central uh, repository in your group. So there is a typically the helper's username in, on GitHub is used there. Uh, but I have used the code refinery one, so I can just add this. Uh, it remote add upstream. And if you see now, git remote minus v have two, have two um, uh, remotes. And git graph. So this is what I have, and then I will do git fetch. Uh, Bjorn, someone says your terminal is not visible. Are you sharing the right window? Oh, uh, yeah, just a moment. Stop sharing. Share screen. Share desktop. So if now my terminal should be visible, right? And do you see it, uh, Richard? Yes, it's there now. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I did Git graph. I haven't uh, first. Um, so you see my uh, two branches and the labels on my fork repository. I had just one remote defined. Then I def added the git remote, uh, the, the, the upstream remote, git remote add upstream. And you see, I now have a new upstream defined. Uh, I haven't fetched anything. So my local repository are uh, changed based on the remote commands. But I'll do git fetch now, fetch. Uh, Upstream. So now I got the changes on the central repository. So if I do a git graph now, you'll see that the two branches uh, that I merged in uh, have uh, all, I also had now locally. Uh, but my head is pointing to currently to the uh, uh, to the to the to the the branch that I last worked with on. Um, so uh, when I fetch from central repository, I, I I normally don't use git pull. But if I had done git pull here in this situation, I, I would get a merged. Uh, fetch, first the fetch which we have done but then I would I get a, a merge in the branch where I'm 
uh, current lane uh, in the Nori clamp, and that would be then messy. Um, so before the, the going to, um, uh, so I, I like to do this stepwise uh, because uh, often often I forget to move to master when doing this. So uh, git checkout master, and then I can do git uh, merge on upstream. Uh, master to get in sync with uh, with um, with what was on the central repository. So now uh, it's only the fork that remains uh, out of sync um, with with uh, with the central repository and our local. Uh, repository. Um, so I'll um, push these changes to, to, to what's defined as origin git push origin uh, master. Like that. Git graph Git uh, um, the repository. It's it's not uh, it's unchanged when it comes to content, but it gotten extra labels. So so now we see that um, my local head uh, um, uh, is pointing to master, and upstream master is equal with origin master, and and uh, so so our. Uh, repository uh, are now uh, equal. So if I go to to my local repository, I should see everything um, there as well. I have um, I have added the the uh, recipes for the Moroccanian and Nordic, Nordic lamp, uh, and there is five commits. Um, the Nordic lamp is the only branch in addition. Um, if I look at the tags, no, nothing. Uh, if I go, yeah. So uh, I took the long route here. Uh, uh, as I said, there's a faster way to do by doing this with git pull and git push, uh, but I don't normally use git pull. I so we have this uh, picture from Star Wars, Luke Skywalker. You know, I did feel something. I could almost see the remote. Then Kenobi, that's good. You have taken your first step into a larger world. So uh, with this, um, you are ready to contribute on to a lot of repositories on GitHub. Um, Yes, the, 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 it's now, um, the name pull request is a little bit weird, but you're requesting other, the maintainer to pull your changes. So, so I guess that's the why, why it's named that way. Uh, it's on GitLab, it's named uh, merge request. So, um, and, and we see it's all, it's very important to create a feature branch, that you create a branch uh, and do the changes there, um, and uh, and uh, never commit to a branch where you miss uh, wish to um, submit the pull request towards because then things becomes um, messy. Um, 
yeah, partly it's seen how you can apply code review. Um, and, and here you, with the, the code review, you, ideas can easily get shared, uh, not only within the project, but also from, from uh, people outside the project. Um, and more eyes on code improves the quality of the code. So, um, so by being able to work in this model, you, you can get yeah, output uh, from totally strangers, which, which can be fun. Okay. Is there any uh, questions or I need to address from the HackMD? I can ask a question. What if I submit a pull request and you ask me to make changes? How do I apply these changes? Do I need to close the pull request and open a new one? Is there a better way? Um, you, you can then uh, go and, well, you can have a discussion on how uh, you, you can do these uh, changes and then you can uh, continue on your on the branch you have locally and do the changes there, push them, uh, and these will be become uh, part of uh, the pull request that you originally made. Um, well, and this, this is also the, um, the, um, the function of the draft pull request that you briefly saw, uh, which um, rather long briefly uh, showed you. Um, so uh, where you then draft uh, pull requests are not possible to merge, uh, but they, there you see more the, um, uh, how work progresses as more and more um, pull uh, more and more commits are added to, are pushed to the, to, to the uh, branch. Um, but you could have a similar uh, function uh, with a normal pull request if uh, somebody says that uh, a good idea but you need to change this and this then you can commit uh, add those changes commit them push them and they will be visible in the original pull request okay then we'll go on to the final final lesson. Um, how to contribute changes to somebody else's project. So, <clears throat> so now you have watched the uh, code refinery and you, maybe you find out that you, you will contribute. So if the, uh, if you're find very minor changes, spelling errors like that, you can fork the repository and then create a branch and and uh, push the change and file a pull request like you already did. Um, if there are more a major uh, issue that you want to fix, um, then you open the issue in the uh, repository that you wish to contribute to to describe the problem. And we saw uh, Ravlan do this uh, with the README. Uh, and in this way, you inform others that you, there is a problem, uh, and and it also comes um, make it clear whether the issue is up for grabs or there is somebody working on it. Um, but let's say you have an ID for a new future. <coughs> Uh, then you really should uh, uh, have a more thorough discussion around your uh, or 
around your ID. But, but still you go, go the same way, you open an issue in the repository you wish to contribute to. You write a proposal, let's say, uh, I have much better figures for your, um, for, uh, for the code green final lessons. So, uh, and you state why these figures, for instance, are better than the, the ones we use. So you multiply why and how you wish to do this. And, and see what kind of feedback you get. Um, and then you can start working on, on the changes that you had indicated that you do. So once you're done, you submit your new feature as a pull request with references and, and which then closes the issues. So in this way, people are able to follow along what you're doing and um, the project knows that, yes, there is ongoing work here. And, um, but let's say that you want to develop a lesson for, for some, something that we don't cover, like a regular expression, for instance. We have discussed that so uh, in the project, giving lessons for regular expressions, but we haven't done it yet. But you see this as missing. So you define this as working product requests. You want to show how a lesson with with um, regular expressions can be developed and, and done. So you then make it, you can make a draft pull request and um, or you could um, make a pull request and mark it as WIP work in progress. And then you, people are able to uh, discuss this uh, and give you feedback on, on the work as it progresses. So um, here again, you write a proposal for your suggested change and you motivate why and how you wish to do this and, and collect the feedback. So, so uh, in this different ways, you so these are ways to contribute to projects that, that are more and more kind of engaged in, in a way. Um, yes, and and uh, and working with this uh, the models, just um, at least the forking model, uh, uh, as you just have done. <laughs> it's very easy to to suggest changes, and, and those are very welcome, uh, mostly in, in, in repositories that are on GitHub. Okay, that was the final lesson for this today, and 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 for this week. So I guess we can wrap up. If there are any questions, there are one, one question. Um, if I have a project and somebody is somebody has forked my project and they are working on it, can I see what they are doing? Is there a notification way of notifying that somebody else is working on something? Uh, yeah, yeah, in parallel with your project, so you kind of want to watch the fork. Is Yes. Um, so the the specificity specific question is: If somebody has uh, committed something to a fork, will that be visible to me on GitHub? Um, I'm not sure. It could be, but the, there was something visible to me on 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 the on the code refinery exercise here. So you can Not see. Much. So you can see who forked. You can see all the forks, and then you can watch some of them. So you can go there and start watching them, and then you get notified if you want to follow some of them. But, but uh, do you understand what I'm seeing here? This uh, this is the, somebody. Uh, this is one of the forks. Of, um, this is the forking working for. 
exercise. So I'm, I'm not sure, sure why I see this uh, thinly. Um, yeah, okay, that's a good point. Yeah, that's another way of seeing what at least the activity. So here in this overview, you can see recently active forks and you, you can see whether they are like behind ahead. So if I see a project here, which is then many, many commits ahead of my project, maybe, maybe I'm interested in looking what is going on there and maybe they have some interesting features. I can contact the person and, and suggest, hey, how about maybe you can send me a pull request and we can put it into my repository also. If I go here, I will go to Otto Mirvai's repository and see what he has done. Yeah. yeah. And I, there was also a question which I didn't, uh, unfortunately, I didn't talk about it at all. And that is that we rec about protecting the master branch. Is that is there a way to protect the master branch? And there is a way, and I, I, I missed that, but there is a there is a little window in that centralized workflow section. So we, I think I recommend that for, if you are in a team, it can be a really good idea to write protect the master branch. Nobody can push directly. Everything has to go through code review. I think this is a really good setting. Also something I really failed to mention this morning was that really everything in Git except pull and push is local. So only fetch, pull, push, involves network, everything else is local. Any other important question we should raise in the main room? Mm. There was one question I got in the breakout room and that was so issues, are they only for reporting problems? And also beyond discussed it, but I think it's a very really good question. So no, it's not only for reporting problems, but issues are also for suggesting ideas before doing six months of coding and then realizing that this was not what they wanted or it doesn't fit or it was the wrong problem or the wrong solution. It can be a way to suggest something, collect feedback before doing all that work. So it's not only for problems. Um, what we do if we find a spelling error and they don't have the time to correct it, we make an issue. Or somebody reads a sentence that's too complicated to understand, then we make an issue, rephrase, or if, you, if you're not able to handle it there and then. Yeah, and an excellent question is coming in right in right now in the in the HackMD. When I push some changes to a fork, and we are waiting, so we send a pull request, and now we are waiting until this thing gets accepted, and it can take a week or two. Should I continue working on that branch? There is a problem with that, and the problem is that when I do new commits, they will get appended to the same pull request, because pull requests are from a branch to a branch; they are not from a commit to a branch. And this is why we recommend it to not send pull requests from master. But rather you, you create a feature branch, you send a pull request and then you can forget about it. And then it can be reviewed and it can, but you can continue working on a new branch. So for every new step, create a new branch and then you will not get bad surprises. So there is no, there is really no need to wait uh, for the pull, pull requests before you continue work, create a new branch. Of course, sometimes your new work depends on the work that you have submitted, but then you can create a new branch from the one that you have submitted. 